are able to, to know and follow what is happening currently. Hope you are able to follow. Mr. Peter, you can share, I've shared, please you can present from my side. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is our topic tonight, drug abuse and addiction in uh, simplicity. We are going to be looking at two different issues, that is drug abuse, then addiction. But uh, I'll first talk about drug abuse, then we cross to addiction side. Uh, we can go to our slide. So here, this is the background that uh, I came up with. One is uh, harmful, so these uh, substances, they are harmful substances. For example, we have alcohol and other drugs, which in the development as they are diversely affect individuals, families, communities, and that is well-being. As we are well aware that uh, when there is a community that is abusing these drugs, we came up with uh, some few uh, with, uh, uh, effects. One is uh, our individually, individually people are being affected by these substance abuse. Then from individual levels, it uh, graduates into families. Because in addiction, we say addiction is a family disease. Only one person uh, is sick, but it makes the whole family members to suffer. Then the community, it graduates from individual uh, to families, then communities. Uh, for example, there are many areas. For example, I'm currently working in Iganga, Mayugi, and the Bugweri. And these areas, when you interact with the people on the ground, that there is no any kind of uh, development just because of uh, many people, especially the elders and the youths, they are just engaging in uh, substance abuse. Then two, Uganda is ranked among the highest alcohol consuming countries in Africa and facing worst alcohol related consequences such as uh, diseases, poverty, uh, domestic violence, accidents on the road, and others globally and major cause, uh, major cause and effects of addiction is mental health. So when people, they are being affected with these effects, say the diseases, poverty, uh, domestic violence and accidents on the road plus others, then it also makes them to develop this kind of addiction, which is called the mental illness. Some people, when uh, they are addicted to substances, other people call them mad, but for us who are in this profession, we just call it a mental illness. These people are not uh, mad people. And uh, here, I want to give you some kind of facts be before I go to the last bullet. Uh, this is a research by World Health Organization, which is telling us that they are in Africa and the majorly in Uganda, because Uganda is also in a developing country, that uh, the harmful use of alcohol results in 3.3 million deaths each year. Just imagine, this is a result by the World Health Organization and is telling us that 3.3 million deaths each year, just because of substance use, then uh, on average, every person in the world, at least aged 15 years or older, drinks that uh, it is 6.2 liters of pure alcohol per year. Then it also gives the fact that less than half of the population, uh, that is 38.3% actually drinks alcohol this means that those who drink consume on average 17 liters of pure alcohol annually. So my brother or my sister who is over there and is following this presentation, as we move on, I think you'll be able to get yourself like how many liters have you been consuming in a year according to this research that I'm presenting. 
been uh, at least 15.3 million persons have drug use disorder. So the disorder here that we are talking about is that addiction, the mental illness. Uh, then uh, injecting drug use reported in uh, 148, that is 148 countries, of which 120 reports have uh, infection among this population, which means uh, there are many people that have been infected with uh, HIV just because of uh, uh, they are using these substances. Here, I'm looking at the mostly common, commonly abused drugs and respective street names. These are uh, names that we picked from Kampala Street when I was still working with Hope and Beyond and Life Back Foundation in uh, Kampala. We have uh, marijuana, other people on streets of Kampala, like in, uh, in uh, Kisenyi, uh, there is a place called uh, Kamocha and other streets there. They call it Mugo or street, weed, other people call it Sada. Sada. Then we have cut, uh, Kakola or leaf, other people call it side mirror. Then we have another uh, drug here called Mira, uh, Tama. Other people, they chew. In fact, they, are like, they, they behave like a goat. They chew uh, this kind of uh, Mira and they, they make uh, their cheeks hard. Then we have another commonly used drug here. It's called heroin. And uh, its name is Nchwiri, or Kachwiri. Other people call it Mayoyo. Uh, as we continue, there are other drugs, as we can see and follow. But still, uh, in this profession, we categorize. The first go back to the other slide. We categorize these uh, uh, drugs into four or five classes. We have the stimulants, then we have the hallucinogens, we have the opioids, we have the depressants, then inherents. Then according to the new research that is by CDC, that is the Centers for Disease and Control Prevention, it is coming up with the new psychotic substances. And these uh, also coming on board. I will not give you the definitions of uh, stimulants, hallucinogens, opioids, and depressants, but all of these drugs that I've just mentioned here, they fall under these categories. Just to make our parents aware, let me just put some emphasis on the inhalants. These inhalants, they contain dangerous substances which with uh, psychoactive properties. And these are commonly used uh, materials at home or household items at home. For example, the cleaning fluid, we have the glue, we have the spray paint, and even other people, they use the fumes that we use to spray ourselves as we move out, go for work and other, uh, to attend other events. Just because they have those kind of uh, uh, chemicals that they're interested, all those properties that they, they are interested in. I think you can go, go to another slide. Uh, we are having some reasons why uh, many youths are using these substances. According to research, there are very many, there are very many reasons why people are using uh, these substances or why people abuse these kind of substances. Uh, but for me, I decided to come up with and, and summarize those uh, reasons. There's a few, like one, we have this passive, uh, massive advertisement on radios, we have uh, 
those adverts on TVs, billboards in towns. Like for me, I'm staying here in Ginger City, but there are many billboards that they are advertising these uh, substances, especially alcohol, because it, alcohol it is illegal. Is illegal good in Uganda, and uh, we have peer pressure. This is among the youths, uh, those school ongoing children, youths at campus, and even among the, uh, the working class, we have peer pressure. Then uh, other people just use these substances to feel high, good, relax, get energized, and oh, to sleep. Because when we talk about sleep, they are. Uh, we talk about the, the presence, like the, the Varium. Other people just take Varium to make them sleep because they spend the whole day at work and when they reach home, they are awake by six. So as a result, they end up not having sleep just because they are fatigued. So they start using this kind of uh, tablet in the long run, they develop an addiction. Then another reason here it is to boost sexual performance. Here it has been on rampant. There are many youths over there and many men that uh, have been getting challenges with this sexual performance issues. But on TVs, they advertise many, many, many uh, substances others have those kind of uh, that contain and uh, getting addicted to them because they have that property that is addictive. Then here we talk about the environment. Uh, there are many uh, people that are staying in various kind of environment setting and they are prone to uh, substance use, which results into addiction. Uh, second, last year we talk about the erosion of cultural values, traditions, uh, life lifestyle. There is one culture in uh, there is one culture in uh, in uh, DRC whereby I, I was blessed to at least hope a client who started abusing drugs when he was still in uh, P P2, started using uh, alcohol when he was in P2, that's at age of eight. Now he's uh, a big man in the country, but was still started using alcohol at that age, just because of this one of their traditions and values that they, they respect in their uh, tribe. Then the last one is, uh, inadequate life skills. There are many uh, communities that we are staying and other people, they lack those life skills. But uh, when you, when you, you expose that list, we call it exposure, when you expose it to other kind of environment, at least the risk of getting, uh, addicted to this substance use tended to reduce. I think we can cross to the next slide. Uh, here, I just talked about the psychological consequences of drug abuse among the younger people. Uh, one is to mod is modal disorder, that is depression and anxiety. Then two, trauma, drug using, uh, young people are both victims and potential perpetrators, attention deficit, hyperactive disorder, adult disorder, then vulnerability to juvenile delinquencies. Uh, and here, they, they, uh, they make them to, to commit many crimes in the community. There are many uh, people out there because addiction is a brain disease, and when someone has nothing to, to, to abuse at a certain time, they end up uh, using
get money and buy this kind of stuff. We can go to the next slide, but the next slide, I think we shall be talking about addiction. And according to various sources, they tell us that addiction is a chronic brain disease that affects the brain's reward, pleasure, memory, and the motivation. Here, uh, that's according to World Health Organization and there is also another, another source that is Mayoyo Clinic. So other people, and there is also this book, DSM-5, where by addiction is a brain lapsing disorder or disease characterized uh, by seeking and using these substances despite the consequences. Even if someone has nothing to eat, will end up looking for these substances and abuse them just because is supposed to use. You, you, you will see in the graphics that is in uh, the next slide, how these people get addicted to do these kind of substances. Let's go to our next slide. Yeah, this is a step one of addiction. It is a progression of addiction for stage one. We call it the experimental recreational use or social use. Here, if you look at the, this gentleman down here, he has a lot in his mind. For example, we have a uh, he has the sports. So you, you just imagine that you, that some person called Emma is the one here, not in Sadu, Emma, but some Emma somewhere in Dubai is here. So this man is having sports in his mind, family, exercise, work, food, uh, school, friends, plus substances. So a person here in this picture, start by using uh, these substances just to experiment because he wants to find out what will happen in the next minute, what will happen in the next few days. So this person just use these substances on a occasional uh, occasions or events. You go with a friend to attend a certain wedding and there is a lot of alcohol and uh, because at home he's uh, a member of Simawa, he doesn't want to spend his money. So he, when he goes to the party, just want to experiment and see what will happen. So here, in this uh, graphic that we are seeing on our screens, there are many reasons that the individual end up struggling with an addiction that may try to use these substances with. Then it can be a seemingly begin. Let's go to the first stage. It has been a seemingly begin as getting a, pres a prescription to manage pain. Because here we also talk about the people who get addicted to painkillers and other kind of uh, uh, pres prescription drugs because not only that people can get addicted to substances, but even other kind of uh, things, because we have people who are addicted to uh, masturbation, sex addiction is also there and other issues. So here, uh, we, we can talk about the few factors that can lead to someone abuse these drugs on the first time. One is a family history. Uh, we have people that start uh, by attending events, as I earlier stated, 
and uh, that will follow. I, I can call it a gen genetic. Then we have a uh, chaotic living environment. We have those environments where people can start using just because of those environments are uh, chaotic. We can talk of uh, peer pressure there. We can talk of uh, loneliness when someone is lonely at home and wants to get high or happy and ends up going to the uh, club and end up buying. Just there is no any kind of force that has forced that person to move out just because that person is lonely. Let's cross to the second, the second uh, stage. That is the second stage. It is called uh, circumstantial or occasional use. This is our second stage of addiction in our cycle. And at this point, this person called Emma uh, is using substances on a recurring improper basis because we have seen some other uh, items have reduced. And uh, what has, has been substituted by substances. For example, we are now seeing uh, work once. Now this is a person who has been attending work from Monday to Friday, but because of substances, you can go to a club, watch TV from there, watch football matches from there, and uh, is absent at work just because of this kind of substances. Here we can talk of the the, the there is research that was presented by World Health Organization uh, and simply defines that substance abuse as is in this way is very harmful. Perhaps individual who is taking a, pres a prescription painkiller decides to take higher doses or use the medication more frequently. This happens even to other people, we call them other, other normal situations. There are people out there, they are given tablets just because of the pain that they are going through and uh, because they want the pain to reduce instantly. And remember, in the Lusoga we say, but uh, sickness comes faster, but going, it takes time. So here, at this stage, now the level of usage increases. And uh, when it goes to people, or when it comes to people who are using heroin, again, the first test when they go to, uh, uh, sorry, the people who use heroin for the first time, they, 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 it can just push them to second stage in addiction because heroin is more addictive than any other kind of substance. I think we can cross to the next third stage of uh, addiction that is uh, intensified or regular use. Other people call it habitual, habitual use. Here, we see that Mr. Emma, who is in Dubai, is using substances and he only attends work like twice in a, a week. A person who has been pertaining his master's degree from a certain university, just is on weekend program, he just goes there on Saturday and on Sunday, he's in the bar. Uh, friends, he only interacts with those ones who are in his category that is using this kind of substances. Sports, he only gets time to uh, interact with those ones in uh, clubs. Then the family, because uh, we have that saying that East or West, home is the best. There is no way you can get rid of your family. So this person can get even uh, a way to get money from the family members, can fake illnesses, can come up with various kind of uh, 
issues just because he wants to get money for these substances. So in uh, stage three, there is a, uh, this is a, a stage where someone can even uh, leave workplace like at midday and goes to a bar or goes to uh, these ghettos and smoke uh, substances. So this person no longer produces any kind of productive work. There is no uh, serious kind of discussion with the friends. There is no seriousness at school. There is no, uh, we can say there is 10% time to look for bread to to, to give to the people at home. So at, at that level, uh, the person increases the dosage and it is more frequent to use and uh, it results into a rupture with the original result that we are going to see in the next slide. So in the next slide here, this person is addictive to to the substances of his or her choice. We look at the kind of items in stage one that was there as being substituted in two substances. There is no work that is taking place at this stage. There is no school. There is no food. There is no, there is no family. There are no friends. So this person at this stage just thinks uh, about substances only, nothing else. We have seen many people on uh, Gatadi Kung Fu Fu, like the other day we saw Kuti Kaye trying to steal a lamp from a car and was arrested just because he was looking for money to buy substances. And even in our uh, local communities, we have encountered, oh, we have seen many uh, people struggling to steal uh, goat, cows, and other items, household items. You you stay with your, your brother and ends up stealing your TV, your phone, just because he wants money. You can even buy an iPhone at 3 million, and this brother of yours takes it and sells it at 200. Just imagine you, you bought your phone at 3 million. The next day, this guy takes it and puts it on market. So when you go to uh, the herbs, there are many, many testimonies because one day I was interacting with one of my clients and he told me he bought a, he bought a dining, dining set, dining table at seven, 700,000. But just because he was broke and he was trying to look for money, he had just spent with this dining for like a period of two months and he had to put it on market. He sold it at 100,000, just imagine. There was even no kind of calculation is to determine the depreciation rate to sell this kind of uh, uh, dining. So here at this stage, we are calling it compulsive. Just someone thinks about the drugs, nothing else. There is even this song go for, for, for of a late power cafe. So at this stage, it is called a deep on a zigara. So at this stage, nothing else, only substance. Because even also no way that they no gain the walala. There are even some kind of uh, comedy. We we, we 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 watch on uh, on uh, TikTok uh, that explains this. And here uh, to to give you some information, there are eleven, according to according to DSM five, there are eleven signs. I'm I'm not going to 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 to. to explain much on the next slide, but let me just give you the 11 
uh, symptoms and signs here. One is uh, using more of the substances than the person originally planned. Because at the, at the other stage, uh, stage five, sorry, stage four, the person is using the substances than the really planned, the really planned uh, amount is supposed to use. Okay, thank you. Uh, then secondly, we talk about uh, being unable to stop using the substances. At that stage, a person thinks of, uh, uh, may think of stopping to use the substances, but just because of the, of the withdrawal symptoms, that person can't stop using the substances. Then three, experiencing relation, relationship problems based on substance use. There are many, many couples out there that struggle with the relationship issues. Yeah. The, fourth, the fourth one is spending large amounts of time seeking or using the substances or covering or recovering from the use. There are many people that spend much of their time as we saw in the other uh, graphics that Emma is no longer thinking of any other kind of thing apart from substance because we saw he left school, is not even at home, is just staying in the ghettos and uh, there is no kind of work he's doing, is not attending uh, to the friends, just this person is thinking of substances because even here, these people end up uh, leaving their their marriages, they leave their spouses, and they, they get connected to these uh, other friends who are using because birds of the same feathers normally flock together. Then here, the fifth symptom here is reducing participation in favorite activities in favor of substance. Someone can even stop attending church just because he wants to use the substances. And then uh, we can also talk about uh, being unable to keep up with daily responsibilities due to substance use. We can talk of uh, craving for the substances all the time. We can talk of uh, continuing to use the substances despite the negative health effects. So here, however much someone is uh, struggling with other kind of diseases or illnesses can't stop because we have seen people who are being ridden and they ask for alcohol. They ask for uh, a cigarette when they are in the hospital, just because at that stage, they can't think of any other kind of uh, issue rather than these uh, substances. Then, uh, Developing tolerance for substance. I talked about it, then experiencing withdrawal symptoms when use is stopped. So when people are using these kind of substances, we can't just make them to leave these substance, these substances once. For example, you can't go to the uh, to these ghettos and get someone and lock him or her in a room and you think that that person can just stop using the substances because every time that person thinks of the withdrawal symptoms because these withdrawal symptoms are again uh, a, serious, a serious issue on their side. Uh, it's like because of my experience I've been, uh, interacted and I've seen many People have been addicted to cocaine, heroin, and these people experience the most, most painful uh, withdrawal symptoms because someone can even cry. Someone can even fail to make a step from where that person is. You can see someone sitting somewhere and fail even to, to, to hold a cup of water just because he's feeling pain in all the body joints is feeling headache. So this kind of uh, 
with Ebola symptoms are very, very painful. We can cross to the next slide. Here, I talked of the seven elements of counseling uh, people with you, uh, uh, with uh, these are seven important element of counseling people with use disorders. So here, I'll, this is what I'm trying to mean. We, the counselors that are in this field, we, we deal with the clients and these clients, oh, okay, each client have got a different experience because a person has been using uh, heroin, you not use the same experience to, to, to hope someone who has been using alcohol only. Then you have these people who have been using uh, nicotine, you not use the same experience to hope someone who has been using Cuba. So in these rehab settings, we have many, many counselors that are hoping these guys to change. For example, let's just look at one that is counselors characteristics and lifestyle. Here, we, we, we have got uh, like five or six characteristics of an addiction counselor. Because an addiction counselor is different from these uh, other counselors. Here, a person or a counselor creates a therapeutic alliance with the patients. There is that kind of alliance that you need to create because the client or the patients must trust you. If he doesn't trust you, then you do nothing to him. Every much you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, it will not change. Then another issue uh, will lead to believe what you are telling him. So here, the client must believe in you and even you to believe in the client. That can help you to uh, uh, to, 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 that can help a counselor to achieve his goals in this client. Then two, we talk about uh, another characteristics of the good counselor that is encourage the patient's or client's recovery. At all time, at all time, an addiction counselor is there to encourage the client to recover because of the various experience that that person has gone through uh, because of uh, the deeds that person has, uh, has uh, experienced in his life or her life. Then another uh, future here, we talk of focus on the client's unique experience. That I explained it. Then another major, major, major characteristic here is uh, listening to these clients because there are many ways clients or patients that they tend to or who tend to lie a lot. But we counselors, we do listen. Very much because we use some kind of psychology. Someone may lie. Today is telling you another story again. Tomorrow we'll tell you another story again the other day. Will tell you another story, but for you, just there to listen and uh, judge at the end of the day. Then uh, we also communicate. Communication here is between uh, the client and the uh, counselor plus the family, because another point here where whereby the family is also involved because this person comes from some family there and this family also needs information about their client. For example, Mr. X and Mr. Y brought uh, uh, the first born at the center. They need information about their son, whether he's recovering or not. So there is that kind of communication that needs to be ongoing. 
then uh, if the client here is not progressing on way, you refer. But for us, in a kind of this kind of counseling, we just refer them to another counselor. For example, you go to a certain center and they're having like two psychologists, uh, five uh, counselors at least to deal with that person like for a month. And when yeah, you have failed each other, you refer that client to another counselor, not to another center. Or oh, you refer to a psychologist for more guidance. Then the last point here, under uh, counselors' characteristics and life and, and style, we talk of the uh, developing a relapse prevention plan. A relapse prevention plan can help someone not to relapse as soon as they leave these uh, rehab centers. Then two, we talking about the hoping relation is uh, application of co-counseling uh, skills, individual counseling, awareness of stages, of, uh, and strategies for change, uh, managing of group counseling. This is majorly in uh, in uh, centers whereby we here. Uh, managing this group counseling. They are mainly in rehab centers. You go to a center that has got uh, like 20 clients because these centers have got timetable that they follow. So there are those sessions that you just need to, to, to conduct in groups. And there is a way we conduct them. Then uh, six, that is psych education groups for clients and families. Uh, here, I'll just concentrate on the families. Uh, in LA, uh, man's culture, we call it, Anna, it is a family disease, addiction is a family disease. So every person in the family must know what this person is struggling with. Someone might uh, be struggling with uh, alcohol, and the wife doesn't bother about it. Uh, the children doesn't, uh, they don't bother about it. But here, we counselors, we need even the children to be aware of what their father is going through. That helps them to understand and even help him change and recover. Then lastly, the teach, uh, teaching current skills. When you go to these centers, we have many we have many programs for these clients. For example, we have the life skills, we have uh, experiential, we have uh, occupational, we have uh, cognitive, we have, uh, and go to the last, we can go to the last uh, slide. This is our, our last, sorry. Let, let's pass, go to the, the other slide, then we cross this one. This is, uh, these are lessons we learned. One is a uh, high drug use prevalence among young people calls for innovative and youth friendly prevention and treatment. For example, in schools, we need uh, these addiction counselors to conduct uh, sensitization and uh, inform these people or inform the teachers and, uh, and uh, the students what addiction means, the substances they are most likely to see and even use in the future. Because I was lucky that I didn't study from schools where, where teachers were not bothered, but uh, they used to bring uh, people and talk to us. They used to bring uh, pastors, uh, reverends, and fathers to, to preach the gospel for 
people just to keep on the right track, but uh, just be, uh, currently, just because of uh, exposure, much advertisement on TVs, radios, and billboards, we need to keep our children safe, even the TVs at home. We just need to keep these children safe and at least help them be able to not to, to, to get addicted to these co access to these kind of substances. Then two, younger people respond better to treatment than adults. In the jobs, there are many younger people, especially from age 15 uh, to 25 to 30, there are many, 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 many in the jobs, but they get or they respond better to these old guys because I I, I, I used to, to struggle with the uh, old guys there. You see someone at the age of 60, 70 was brought in the center. is not even used to this kind of settings. Doesn't even understand what is uh, what counseling means, but it's just there to pass time. But the sponsor or the person who brought that person to the center needs positive results. So when a person is still young, can respond and even stop using this kind of substances completely. Then youth friendly services hope in attracting and retaining young people in the treatment. So in these uh, rehab settings, we we have a program that we follow and even can even and even make people to keep coming back just because they are missing the life in the rehabs can even uh, make people to relapse from outside and just because they want to come back to the rehab center for the services. Then the last one is uh, life skills and uh, livelihood skills are important. Preven prevention and treatment strategies that should be used in homes and education centers. We need to, for, for example, people who are in uh, people who are in uh, schools and other institutions, organizations. I've seen here people who are working with the different organizations. We need to come up with programs because we might be having people that are struggling with addiction and other people are not aware. Uh, so. Even at home, so we need to come up with programs. We'll be inviting counselors to talk to us. We'll be inviting psychologists to talk to us, or even introducing uh, an institutional counselor. Just someone is employed to be talking to us because people are not just struggling with addictions only, but even we are struggling with other affairs, relationship affairs, uh, even work problems but can't share with anyone just because they have the only reasons. We have got introverts. They can't share with anyone. They are just there. Now let's go to the last slide. As I told you at first, I'm working with uh, Say for Ethi Uganda, and we are promoting uh, committed health insurance in 15 districts in Uganda, but even in Jinja, we, um, I'm not, this project is not about self health. This is a, a Jinja Recovery Center. And our motto is building a health mind. And we're offering this kind of services, addiction counseling. We do addiction prevention programs, pre marital counseling. Uh, youth mentorship, outreaches to institutions and organizations, mental health consultations, psychiatric uh, assessment and management, that's uh, stress, trauma, depression, schizophrenia, panic attacks, and uh, many others. Then we are also setting up a rehabilitation center in uh, Ginger, where we shall be rehabilitating people with these addictions and uh, and other mental illnesses, rehabilitating and treating. So I take this opportunity to appreciate you and welcome questions. Yes, thank you. 
Uh, thank you so much, Prince Mingi. Peter, it has been a wonderful presentation. So rich in knowledge. <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, to the colleagues in, uh, the CPD link has been sent in the, in the chat. You can see find it. Uh, we all come up with what we addicted to various 